Okay, what's going on guys? Uh, it's been a very, very long two weeks for me, but best part about it, I do get to hang out with the little fella Parky down there. If you hear some weird noises, it's just him bashing his toys around the tiles. Do you want to sing Parky? Hey man. <laughs> yeah. So it's not all that bad, you know, it's not all that bad, but I'm craving to get out there. Uh, it's given me a good opportunity just to set myself up with all my gear, give it a full once over. And I've got my hands on the new Lexa. So this is a new Lexa 2022. Uh, I've got the old Lexa here, which I've used, and you guys would have seen me catch hundreds and hundreds of fish on this thing. And to be honest, I absolutely love it. From the most beginner fisherman to the most experienced fisherman, I think this is the most user-friendly reel you can get on the market. Um, like when it comes to lasting, I don't know the technical side of things, but I know this thing is indestructible to me. You know, I get to fish it a lot more than the average person will, and they still feel great. They still have great drags. And, you know, to me, it's just the perfect reel. Like if there was a better reel that I liked, I would just use it. Uh, but this is it to me. So the difference is um, in the two reels. So this is the old Lexa, and this is the new one. So it's got ever so slightly more narrow body, the new one, and it's got a tiny bit longer handle. So, it's, you know, you're gonna get a bit more torque out of your reel having a longer handle. And one of the cool things they've done is, it's not just a jig reel, you can also use this as a swim baiting and casting reel because they've now put the T-wing system on it. So the T-wing system, if you look carefully, as I engage the reel, the T-wing system comes out, whereas the old system, was just a straight circle. The T-wing is a much larger area for the line to come out. So when you're free spooling and jigging or when you're casting, you're not having all that line drag coming across the reel because you've got this much larger area for the line to come out. So free spooling, a lot quicker, casting a lot better. Um, yeah, basically that's all it is to me sits because it's a bit narrow sits a lot nicer in your hand as well and like in your palm so what i'm going to do is i'm going to show you how i set this reel up on these rods line leader lures the whole lot just run through it because i've seen a lot of guys even on my boat like even really good mates one who know how to fish and they just don't know how to set things up right and this isn't the correct dictionary way of doing it this is just the way i do it and i've done it for a lot of years those poor toys. I've done it for a lot of years and this is just the way I do it. If you guys do it a different way, that's amazing. If you take something from this, even better. But for you guys who are starting off, this is a really, really good video for you to watch and just take it all in because it, it works. You know, it's proven, it works. It's a way to do it. So we're going to start with spooling up your reel first. So I've gone for the new Nomad Design Jigging Braid. So it's called Ammonite, and it is actually a lot thinner than your standard braid. So for a P4, 55 pounds, it's 0.3 of a mil. So what that's gonna do on this reel, I had a quick look before. Uh, we've got 0.28, which gets you 285 meters, and 0.23, which gets you 170. So if we meet that in the middle with the 0.3, we're gonna get about 250. 250 meters on that, roughly, because we're gonna put it on tight. So the maximum we jig out here is probably 60 to, or 40 to 60 meters. So there's ample line capacity on these tiny little reels. So first things first, we're gonna put it on the rod and I'll show you the rod a bit later and the details behind it, but basically it's a P2 to four Nomad jig rod. Um, you're gonna set it up exactly how you're gonna use it. And then what I'm gonna do is get the braid. There's obviously a little bit of a process to it. Like you can't just do it super quick and you don't wanna do it quick because this is the difference between catching a lot of fish and not. So I'm gonna actually thread the braid and I'll try and fast forward some of these little sections for you. Um, I'm gonna fast, Oh, Parky. <laughs> Parky's actually doing a poo right now. 
So I'm gonna silence it, just let him have his moment in peace. He really nails the timing of things, doesn't he? Whether it's throwing limes at me or doing a poo. We're gonna even have to cut for a second and sort that out too while he's done. Alright, so I'm gonna thread it through the T-wing and then a lot of people tie them off um, and they'll do like some type of special knot. I don't. I kind of do it the easy way and the effective way. So I just get a band-aid or a piece of tape. Band-aid's really good because it's actually, you get these band-aids and they're grippy on the outside. So all we're going to do is cut a thin strip of that. Let's just take the actual line straight to the spool of the reel. So that's what it looks like. All I've done is put that little bit of tape straight down over the line onto the spool of reel. And that's gonna grab it. For you guys who say that, you know, the, the line can possibly pull through the tape and then slide on the spool, it doesn't because we're gonna put it on tight. So all I do now is I just do several little wraps to get it started. And now this is this is a part I kind of find the most important. So you get a wet rag. And for those guys who go into tackle stores and use a spooling machine, that's fine, but it's okay on overhead reels, but it's really not really not safe on heavy spin rods because if the person who's doing it doesn't do it tight enough, your line actually, because they're using it and they're spooling it on so finely, your line will actually bite into itself and you'll lose every single fish. I've seen it happen before many, many times to mates of mine who go and buy setups and the tackle stores, stores spool them up and they just do it too finely and too loosely. Look, a lot of guys might do it correctly and good on you if you do. If you're a tackle store, please put it on as tight as possible. Uh, because the line will bite into itself and then you've instantly got no drag and it will break. So now that we've got reel on rod, line attached to spool, uh, this is like my little makeshift way of doing it. So I've got an arrow, Just poke it through the hole. You can use kind of a bit of anything. I've figured out that this couch has like the perfect little groove to hold it. But I'm gonna wrap the braid around the rag at least two times. And I'm gonna fold it over itself and fold it there and then pinch it as hard as I can. And if it's not tight enough, I'll do it again. The important part about the rag and what it's doing is it's causing friction and it's putting the line on really tight. The other thing it's doing is it's taking all, like a lot of braids have wax and, and kind of colorations to them. So the rag is actually taking all the excess wax off. It's taking any excess coloration or garbage off the line and it's wetting it. So it's going on tight and it's going on wet. So it's getting a perfect lay, which means that at any time if you hook a really big fish, as that line's coming off your spool, it's got a perfect, perfect lay to it. And it's just, it's a much kind of safer system. Um, and then it's really simple. All we're gonna do is just wind it on. Um, my little setup there just kind of lets the spool just do its thing. Alright, so if you look carefully, we've just spooled it up, which is a, it's a pretty daunting part for a lot of people. Um, what I've done there is, hopefully it's focused enough, I've put the braid exactly in line with the spool. So that's how kind of deep you want to make it. And 
This is about as rare as it gets. Very, very, very rare that it happens. There's maybe five or six little wraps left on that spool. So that's a 300 yard spool of P4, 55 pound ammonite, the new Noma jigging braid, and it's gone basically perfectly on that Lexa. Uh, so now what we're gonna do, that's on there really nice and tight, perfect lay of the line. Ha very, very happy with that one. Uh, we're gonna cut it. And I'm gonna grab some leader. For anyone who's starting off jigging, um, basically anything I find in central Queensland north, the fish are fussy, but they're also not crazy fussy. So please do yourself a favor and just use 100 pound. If you're fishing Peter Faust Dam or Cross Pine Dam, please <laughs> use 100 pound. There's something about the barra there that just have abrasive teeth. Um, so for me, all I do when I go and buy a leader is I just buy a whole lot of 100 pound Pandera. To me, this stuff covers the whole lot. It'll do fresh water, jigging, casting, flats, the whole thing. The only thing I don't use it for is obviously GTs where I move up to that 150 to 200 pound. But 100 pound Pandera will cover you in all bases. So for me, that's the one. Pick that. Now, when people talk about kind of like how much leader to use. It, it is very awkward if you have a very full spool to be winding the actual line through all your guides and onto your spool itself, especially with heavier leader. So all I wanna do is I know for myself, my full arms reach is basically from the reel to the tip of the rod and a little bit further. So I know I'm pretty safe. So I just do a full arms reach that's exactly it. I'll pinch it at the end there and then just cut that. If you're, um, if you like using a, a longer leader, that's awesome. That's perfect. That's your thing. But as a general rule for a lot of fishing, full arms width is going to get you completely out of trouble. Now, if you guys haven't or don't know how to do an FG, uh, I will put the link in one of my videos below, but it's just a really simple technique where you make a, like a triangle in the line um, and I'm just going to crisscross, which is causing the finger trap, the leader and the best, tech, the best thing about this technique is as I'm doing it, I'm putting the braid on the actual leader, a writ like tight as it's going on. So we're going to do that. Finish it off with four half hitches on the actual leader. And then we're going to pull that tight. And then you're going to half hitch the actual braid to the braid itself four times again. So, one, two, three, four. That last one, I don't mind doing a bit of a double half hitch at the end because it seems to kind of wrap over the singles and lock itself in there. What's up, Parky? Then we're just going to trim that. Okay. It'll be very, very hard to see that. Probably going to hold it there so you can see it. But that's your FG. Um, like I said, I'll put the link in the description so you guys can actually watch that properly. Now, we've attached our leader to our rod, reel, line, whole lot. Now it's this is where it gets a little bit more technical. These are, this is probably the two most common ways I like to set my jigs up. So you've got your basic jig. And don't get me wrong, your basic jig will catch and has caught a lot of fish. Um, but for me, I'm fortunate enough to be in a place where I like using good hooks. Um, so what we're gonna do these little splitty pliers, 
are also incredible. So if you ever get your hands on them, make sure you buy some. I'm going to take the hook off, leaving the split ring on. I've got my jig here, split ring on the top. Now this is probably the most common way that we all set our jigs up. Parky, what's up buddy? Do you want to come in here? Hey? Come on. Come up. You can watch too. Hop in there. Hop in there. Yeah. What are we going to give you to bash? Clicked in. Hey, you good? Do you need something? Look at this. The spool? There you go. All right. So, the most common way we all basically set our jigs up is these are BKKC ranges. Um, I get a 3XL, that's a size I like. I think Johnny goes between a 2 and a 3XL, depending on the fish he's targeting. The really cool thing about Sea Rangers is that little bit of tinsel there is actually leather jacket skin. So it's actually fish's skin. It's really cool. Um, to me, I definitely find they put off that tiny, tiny little bit. Hey! Oops. It's gone now. I'm sad. Sad boy. And I'm just going to attach these to the original splitty. Alright, so we've got our jig set up here. And now this is very, very important. It's something I see a lot of people do wrong. They either attach the hooks to the bottom of the jig which the whole design of the jig is the weight is on the bottom. So when they sink, they sink kind of bum first and then they flutter. So if you tie it to the bottom, you're kind of going to kill that whole technique. So what we're going to do is we're going to tie it to the solid ring. Very, very important that you tie to the solid ring, not the split ring and not the jig, because if you tie to the jig or the split ring, that's your weak point because the fish is attached to the hooks and there's a possibility that your split ring can always straighten out. So it's very important you tie to the solid ring. So the way I'm gonna do that, and this is, a lot of people ask me, you know, like what do I, how do I attach my leader to my lures? And this is the only knot I do, even when it comes to GTs. I know it's kind of lazy with the GT thing, but I have so much faith in this knot. So the way I start is a little granny knot all right, so we've got our granny knot. We've gone straight through the solid ring. I'm gonna go through that, the actual circle of the granny knot. I'm gonna pull it tight so that I don't want a big loop knot. I just want a small one. And then I'm gonna pinch it. And naturally, if, as soon as I let this tag go, watch where the leader goes. See how it naturally goes down? So I'll do that again naturally goes down. So that's the way we're going to do it. We're just going to go one, two. Oh, we got power back on. And as we do the two, we've got that large circle that it's created there. And that's what we're going to go through like that. And then you're going to pull the leader and the tag itself. Then we're going to trim that. And that's your setup. Now you've tied exactly to the solid ring which is directly attached to the hooks. So you can't go wrong. You cannot possibly break that. There's no faults in between there. That's what you want. I'm gonna put the fan on because we finally got power back. All right, so one of the other ways you would have seen me rig up a jig and to me, if I'm fishing uh, slow currents, this is what I like to do. If I have slow currents and fussy fish, this is my second favorite way to set up a jig. 
So these, are, this is a BKK, they're called 8070s, or SF 8070s. They've got this amazing fluff and tinsel on the end of them. So the way we're gonna set this up is instead of taking the actual hook off, we're gonna take the hook and the split ring off completely. And we're just gonna have a bear jig. What'd you drop? Oh, you dropped all your crackers. There's one, there's two, there you go. Good? Okay, so we've got just a straight bare jig here. And then what we're gonna do, really, really simple. That goes straight through one. Pulls onto there, pull that out. Get our second one through the bottom. And all I'm doing here is I'm just putting the hook straight through the loop itself and it just half hitches itself on there. So the idea behind this is you still tie to the top of the jig. So the skinny section of the jig, basically where the eye is always, the eye is always on the top of the jig. And in slow current, really fussy situations, as the jig goes down, it'll naturally flutter, but then these kind of act as parachutes and it has this awesome kind of fluttering technique and it just wobbles its way down as these kind of parachutes are holding it. So this is probably my most common way in slow fussy situations. And then that's just your go-to. So one thing I, please, please do me a favor. When you're actually traveling, the most correct way to do things when you're traveling, and this is another reason why you also have split rings, don't leave your jig on. You know, like I've just set this up and it's cool because you can get to a spot and drop. Just take the 10 seconds that it takes and take your jig off, your split ring, like that. Put your jig somewhere, even put it in your pocket if you want to. Goes in like that. And then all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna watch the fan. And now you've just got hooks. So I can attach that to that little eyelet. If I'm lazy, I can attach it to my reel, which most of us do like that. And it stops when you're traveling, that jig flying around and hitting your blank. Like these are graphite blanks. They're extremely fragile and they're extremely sensitive. And then we want them sensitive so we can feel everything. But you don't want your jig or your sinker or your lure just bashing against them because I promise you it's going to cause a weak spot and it's going to break there. So just take that 10 seconds, take your jig off, put it in your pocket, get to your spot, put your jig on, you're safe. As a setup guys, this is it, to me like probably the most user friendly, well priced and it's, you could go as basic as you want as starting off and the most experienced fishermen still use them. So that's it. Uh, the Lexa is, for those guys who want the exact one, it's a 300 HP. So it's a new TW 300 HP. What I'd really like to do now is watch, so see how this is set up. Hopefully the weather's gonna give me a little bit of a chance. I'm gonna actually take this set up and now go and catch a fish with it, which would be really cool. So I've shown you the whole process of how you set them up, what you do, um, little kind of hints, hopefully, that you've taken along the way. And now I'm gonna go and catch a fish and I'll show you the how to sound, how to find the fish drop down and the whole process. So stay tuned for the next video. I don't know when this weather's, weather's going to give us a chance, but when it does, keep an eye out for this setup. We're going to run it. We're going to run it damn hard.